Decompression maneuvers are required in around 20%. Underwater electrosurgical applications are common in urology, arthroscopy, and ophthalmology. Underwater endoscopy has been shown to enhance near-field detail, and underwater EMR and hemostasis has been reported by our group in the colon and the duodenum. Our hypothesis, the use of water rather than gas may improve visualization and decrease adverse events during poem. We used a high-definition gastroscope with transparent cap. We used an irrigation pump hooked up to the endoscope auxiliary water channel. We used sterile water without additive, and we used a foot pedal to control the infusion at 25 cc's per minute. We use an I-type hybrid knife for injection, dissection, and hemostasis. We use a coagulating forceps for larger vessels and an endoscopic suturing device for closure of the tunnel. We start 12 centimeters above the GE junction with a posterior injection. This is a standard injector needle. We inject a mixture of saline and indigo carmine to create a submucosal bleb. We now switch out for the hybrid knife. We make a two centimeter longitudinal incision for entry into the tunnel. At this point, we're going to switch off the CO2. We're going to enter into the tunnel and we're going to infuse water for our underwater dissection. We apply the tip of the hybrid knife to the interconnective tissues. We are intermittently injecting to uh, enhance the submucosal space and we identify the muscular's propria layer. This is well identified by its white color at the base. We intermittently inject to expand the space, and we stay just above the muscularis propria layer. This is our dissection plane. We can wash away any bubbles with infusion of water with the water pump. Here you can see very nicely the bands of the circular muscularis propria at the bottom. When we identify vessels, we prophylactically coagulate these. When they're small, we can use the tip of the hybrid knife. As we get to the GE junction, the submucosal space narrows, so we have to more generously expand that submucosal space. Again, we stay close to the muscularis propria to avoid any injury of the mucosa. As we get below the GE junction, then the submucosal space opens up. Three centimeters below the GE junction, we inject blue dye. Now we remove the endoscope, we switch on the gas again, we go down into the stomach, into retroflexion, and you can see fullness and the blue dye discoloration confirming that we entered into the cardia. Now we're ready to start our underwater myotomy, eight centimeters above the GE junction. The, air, the gas has been switched off, we're gonna cut the circular muscle layer, this can be quite thick, so we have to do this layer-wise. It's like peeling an onion. And as soon as we identify the longitudinal layer, we stop. At the GE junction, the circular layer can be quite thick. We want to make sure that we completely incise that layer. Again, we have a small vessel. We prophylactically coagulate these. And we can see this very nicely underwater. A larger vessel can be coagulated with the uh, coag graspers. We can target this very precisely underwater. If we have a bleeding point like this, again, water allows us to identify that point very nicely. We can target it with the graspers and apply coagulation. So prophylactic hemostasis is very important. We're continuing our dissection now of the circular muscle layer at the GE junction. As we get down to the cardia, the fibers tend to crisscross. They become a little bit more uh, disorganized. Once again, it's very important to orientate ourselves precisely at the muscularis propria, making sure that we do not accidentally injure the mucosa. So here we're entering into the cardia, and once we have completed our 10 centimeter myotomy, we can withdraw the endoscope, switch on the gas, and now we're gonna close the tunnel opening using the suturing device mounted on the tip of the scope. We place three interrupted sutures to completely close the opening. This is a very robust and seal tight closure using the suturing devices, and this is our method of preference. Our pilot experience in two patients with type 2 achalasia, procedure times were 79 and 100 minutes, 
in this pilot phase. There was no increase in end tidal CO2 in any of the patients or airway pressures. No adverse events. Patients were discharged the next day. Our, the Eckhart scores decreased to zero after the POEM procedure. Our observations, optical benefits of water are the near field image enhancement and the absence of glare. And these contribute to a greater precision of dissection and hemostasis. The gas bubbles generated from diathermy do impair visualization, but only momentarily and can be easily flushed out. That's where we use the infusion. In conclusion, the underwater poem technique is promising in this proof of concept experience. Clearly, further study is needed. Thank you.